Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book on what I would describe as military law, if you can put it that way, but it's the legal aspects of, of war. It's called War, Aggression and Self-Defence. It's now come out in a sixth edition from Cambridge University Press, and it's been written by Joram Dinstein. And I think he's produced a really first-class work here because uh, we do need... Uh, any of those of us who uh, have either served in the army, as I have, um, and then become a lawyer, and other people who have an interest both as political scientists or as lawyers, uh, in the way in which um, the issue of war is looked at in terms of policy, structure of the overall way in which um, it's conducted and legal um, applications, um, this sort of book is very helpful. And the longevity of it is proven we we'll have a look at the book in a second, by the fact that it's now in a sixth edition. As I've indicated, um, we've written a review, Elizabeth and I have talked about this book, and we've written a review, the title of which um, our review is A New Sixth Edition as War Remains the Ever-Present Menace for Yet Another Century. And I'm going to explain that because it's not very difficult to understand, but I'll explain that in a minute. Let's look at the book first. There's the front cover. It's a hardback. Very much the house style of Cambridge University Press. Splendid publishers they are. Now, you can see there's very little information there, and then there's a bit of information about the author. Um, a little bit's been borrowed, not much, because I've come across, could come up with my own view about this particular book. It runs to 400 pages. The index at the back is by page numbering. Um, quite a useful references are to page numbers, it says in the index. Always important, because some of them are by paragraph numbering. And then you've got index of persons, uh, the usual suspects are all there, if you want to have a look for them. Um, certainly just going through, um, there's the, all the usual names. References again onto page numbers, and then you have the book itself. You can see there's some footnoting at the bottom there, just there. There's a conclusion right at the back, which is useful. Always useful to have the logic of a conclusion. That tells you a bit about the book itself, just a repeat of what's on the back cover. Then you've got the actual front page there. Then you've got a detail about Cambridge University Press. And then you've got the content section. And you can see the structure of the book is in diff it's set out in different parts. Part one, the legal nature of war. Part two, the illegality of war. And um, part three, exceptions to the prohibition of the use of interstate force. Then right at the end, you've got ten chapters in total and then the conclusions uh, the annual conclusion. The introduction to the sixth edition, which I've referred to in the review, it's important to read because you get an idea of what is happening. Uh, some very important points being made there. And that's the second page of it. Then you've got a table of some cases because there are some cases involved, obviously, which are uh, highlighted and, and probably quite well known. Then you've got tables of treaties, very, very important because it's international law aspects. And then after that, the Security Council resolutions. I'll talk a bit about this because this is a bit of a UN orientated book, in my opinion. Um, you've got General Assembly uh, resolutions and then you've got abbreviations, very helpful abbreviations. I found when I was in the army, a lot of abbreviations cropped up. This is more to do with the legal stuff, uh, but the abbreviations themselves are always very helpful because it, basically it's the journals that he's looking at. Then he, then he goes straight into part one. That's the legal nature of war. The structure you can see, a title, a um, bit of paragraph numbering there, and then the footnotes. And then it runs through like that all the way through. Lots and lots of lovely footnotes, as usual. Um, and I'm, I'm a person who's not strongly in favour of, of footnotes or not footnotes, to be or not to be footnoted. However, um, sometimes it can be overdone. We all know the suspects. Now, what do we say about the book? We say this. The changing face of warfare is discussed in detail in War, Aggression and Self-Defence. The book originally appeared in 1988 and was last revised in, revised in 2010. And the subject matter is very well covered for uh, the new decade um, by uh, Joram Dinstein in the new sixth edition coming to us as I've indicated from Cambridge University Press and it remains an indispensable guide with world events leading to what is called the sharpening of debates over several of the relevant topics and the author states the war has plagued homo sapiens since the dawn of recorded history and at almost any particular 
moment in the annals of the species it appears to be raging in at least a portion of the globe frequently in many places at one and the same time and that's a direct quote from him which is a statement of the obvious but I think it has to be said because we haven't eradicated it although it's reasonable um, to have as an observation to suggest that we have also uh, an international armed conflicts concept as well which is short of war itself in other words total war uh, so the title of the book caters for what are called outright states of war although the issues remain in my view certainly and I think the authors use similar and a great it's a great book then for any member of the armed forces to read to gain a perspective on war and I would have thought anybody's doing the staff course or the certainly anybody interested um, as as perhaps people doing officer examinations or whatever, uh, would, would find it helpful. I, in the army, I did my trade tests as a, um, a soldier. And again, because of the corps, I was in the intelligence corps, uh, this sort of book would have been very interesting additional reading for me because you, autom you get effectively a form of, of automatic promotion up once you've completed your various trade tests, as long as you fit the particular uh, requirements for being an NCO and then obviously an officer and the structure there is slightly different again. But again, this book, I believe, is, would be of, of very great interest to um, staff college people. Now, Dinstein's mission is to cover what he calls international legal issues of war and peace, the crime of aggression, self-defence and its trigger, which is armed attack and the different modalities, I love that word, of self-defence, in other words, the models, as well as enforcement measures taken under the aegis of a binding decision of the Security Council. But we get back all the way through to the United Nations, which I'm glad to see because I've always believed that if you are going to have problems, you do have a forum and you should use it. Uh, when they don't, that's when I start having some concerns, as I certainly did with um, the, the issue concerning Iraq. Uh, but that's a, so a totally separate I issue. Now, we welcome this new and fully updated sixth edition, which continues to focus on the key issues at the forefront of the contemporary uh, international legal debate which rages, as well as analysing new conflict areas in places such as Syria, Ukraine and Georgia, and re-examining the Kampala amendments, as they're known, on the crime of aggression and considering the phenomenon of robust mandates of a peacekeeping force. Again, I think that's an important area because that is the development of the way in which modern, for, um, modern warfare is perceived until we get to the, the point where, in fact, warfare will no longer be between man and man or woman and woman. It's going to be between robots, and that's not that far off. I sound probably awfully... Um, forward thinking here but you can see immediately even with things like drones and all the other things that are happening uh, pilotless planes that we are very we are moving very much in that direction at the moment so that the loss of life is not going to be considered in the same way in the future because of much of it will be technical but that's for the future and as I say we're using the word robust mandates therefore for peace keeping forces at the present time. So it's very much therefore a contemporary book for our world looking at what war is, how it starts and is there a twilight between war and peace. And I think again that's a, an important argument because we're looking here now more at the theory. Now the work is thought suitable for uh, graduates and advanced study uh, undergraduate level courses and certainly that would be international relations and so forth. The publishers describe it as a market leading book which offers a wide ranging and highly reliable uh, readable um, introduction to the legal issues surrounding war and self-defense although it has the intent uh, that, that attention to detail which some many similar books possibly lack um, i'm not making any comments but certainly i thought the detail in this book and it is heavy on detail uh, it was, was actually very helpful when I went through it. Now, the issues of self-defence and collective security are well covered with substantial reference made to the work of the Security Council and the authorizations of all necessary means, in other words, the use of force, given in response to threats to peace. And for lawyers, Dinstein uh, reviews the work of the General Assembly <coughs> and the International Court of Justice in useful detail. And again, that is... That is a matter which raises itself regularly. I'm just reviewing this 
the end, towards the end of November, when, um, again, we've had the International Court of Justice handing now sentences against the Serbian commander uh, on genocide. So again, you see the issue is regularly pro um, cropping up on the on the sort of current affairs agenda. Let me conclude by saying the final words can be left with Dinstein in his introduction where he writes about the purpose he's got in providing us with this book. Quote, there is also a need to address ever-growing dissensions in the legal literature concerning the scope of an armed attack, preemptive self-defence, foreign interventions in non-international armed conflicts, the definition of the crime of aggression, very important that, the extent of the powers and responsibilities of the Security Council and manifold related subjects. That's what you're getting here and it's actually complex and he's done a huge amount of research to produce an authoritative statement and I haven't seen anything better than this I have to say and so thank you to Cambridge University Press for publishing it. So that's as I say exactly what you're getting and what you might be looking for with your um, researches on international matters. So a big thank you to everybody concerned. And the publication of this edition is cited as at the 31st of October 2017. So I'm reviewing it only a few weeks after it's actually come out. There it is again. There's the spine and then there's the back. And then you can see in there the basic structure. This is looking at response to an armed attack. Well, we've seen a few of those and we could well get some more very shortly, but you can see the structure of the book there, paragraph numbering and then the footnoting at the sides. Um, again, this is a, a sober uh, statement. You can see again more, more examples there of another page. This is a, a sober statement of, of what happens with war aggression and, and self-defence. Um, it's an issue which won't go away. Um, obviously, at this stage, we, we do have a large number of conflicts, not as many as we used to have, I hasten to add, but we still do have a large number of conflicts. So thank you very much to Joram Dinstein and the uh, team at Cambridge University Press for producing this excellent new edition. Bye-bye.